Ladies and gentlemen, have you ever impulsively spent over $50,000? <laughs> if you have, make sure you smash that like button. So this is our impulse purchase of well over $50,000. So what we have here is a 2022 Forest River Wildwood FSX 270 RTK uh, toy hauler. It measures out at tail to end of the tongue at 33 feet, just shy of 33 feet. Uh, dry weight, 5,650 pounds. Loaded weight, I did the math, it's gonna be about 7,500 in and around there. Before we start going on the tour, I wanna talk about the towability using a half ton truck. Now, I'm gonna preface everything by saying most half ton trucks that are out there are pretty much useless for towing. And it's not because of tow rating, it's because of payload capacity. Whole other video, but let's just say this truck with all the numbers and everything, it, it works. It's technically road legal, barely. It's tight, but it does work. Now, if you're towing a trailer of this size with the ramp, we'll get to the trailer in 30 seconds, I promise. What you're gonna need is a weight distribution hitch. So this guy right here, these bars go up and act like um, basically wheelbarrow handles to pull up on the ass end of the truck and transfer the weight. And you're also gonna need airbags. I put some heavy duty airbags in. I'm not gonna go down and film them. It's just a freaking tube inside this ring. So, and some trailer brakes. And some trailer brakes, yeah, I didn't have a trailer brake controller. But anyways, real quick, the reason why we bought this, we like going on adventures in the side-by-side. -side. We don't like spending money on hotels and restaurants. Mobile hotel room, mobile restaurant, we can cook. We, we cook better than most restaurants do anyways. And we can go anywhere with this. Don't need to worry about hotels. Pack up, go for the weekend, ride, have fun. Perfect, right? So, starting at the front of the trailer, it's a power jack, an electric jack. It runs off the battery. The battery is also constantly being recharged by a solar panel that's on the roof. Two 20 pound propane tanks under there. And it just comes with the one battery for now, but there is another tray over there to add a second. Now out here is really cool feature number one. We've got an outside actual, they call, they call it a camp kitchen. So this is just a regular gas stove. It hooks up to your propane tanks. There's under, under here, there's a nozzle right here, like a QC nozzle. And we have another little fridge. It's a 12 volt fridge. So it once again runs off solar and you can keep your breakfast food cold. You can keep the beers cold, all that stuff. Don't have to go in the trailer after a ride to get a nice cold beverage yeah. if you're all muddy. Yeah, if you're muddy in the waders, like you see us muddy all the time, right? <laughs> I mean, cool, you can snack and not wreck the uh, cleanliness of your trailer. You have a power awning that's also run by the battery and it's got an LED strip light underneath. I open it for you, but it's actually pretty windy right now and an awning in the wind is like a sailboat and I don't really want the brand new trailer awning to get ripped. Um, these steps are actually really cool and a lot of RVs don't include a set of stairs with them, but these ones did. These are actually really nice aluminum stairs and to put them away, all you do hold them up like this and they just click into place and then when you want to put them down they have this handle here too you just set them down and the legs are adjustable too so if it's uneven ground you can adjust them so the stairs aren't doing like that right now um the door is actually really cool so it has a friction hinge on it so if the wind catches it it won't slam which is awesome and i'm actually really glad that worked <laughs> it didn't make me look like an idiot um outside speakers and they actually light up which is freaking cool because rednecks love shit that lights up true story uh just some 110 outlets right there and satellite so you can have your an outdoor projector outdoor out projector here. yeah you can actually have a tv set up out here yeah uh the the jacks on the corners that's standard on all trailers just stabilizing jacks where what sets this trailer apart is what i'm about to show you we have an actual patio on the back of the gate of the trailer and they call it the patio party package or something like that and i mean how cool is this some rvs are nice with pop-outs and stuff but i'll take this any day of the week over that and it's a really uh, easy system it just snaps into place with these fancy uh locking devices down here and to undo the gate to actually drive your side by side up you just pull this these two cotter pins out on each side 
and the gate will drop down and then you can drive your side by side right up. In terms of fitment of what vehicles it'll fit, it fits a four seat Razor. So if it fits a four seat Razor, it'll fit most side by sides out there. I would imagine an X3, a full size 72 inch X3 would be a bit problematic to get in. It probably wouldn't fit but any other side-by-side -side in the 64 inch class or under, it'll fit no problem. In fact, with my side-by-side -side in here, there is room, we could probably sneak an ATV in, in front of it as well. So there's, a, you could, maybe not a full-size Outlander 1000, but an Audi 570, uh, Renegade 570, something smaller like that. My face is saying maybe no. <laughs> I think you could, I personally think you could. And what's actually really cool about the ramp is it's line X, so it's got really, really grippy. So when you're, you know, trying to load your side by side or whatever, you don't have to worry about, you know, losing traction and slipping back down the ramp. No, you just freaking grip and crawl your way right up into the rig. And then over here, another cable satellite hookup, all these standard hookups. It's nothing really fancy, this city water connection. So this is a cool feature here. This is a spray port. So they give you a little hose, which I'll show you in a second. And the water tank or city water, whatever you're hooked up to, it can actually um, pressurize enough to spray off your side-by-side -side ATV, whatever, um, before you load it in there. Because that's something I actually thought about. You're out on the trail, it's filthy, and then you have to drive it into your living quarters. Not ideal, but they thought of that with this. And fresh water, so you can just dump water into your holding tank. It's got a 55 gallon fresh water tank, which is actually quite large. Works out to around Oh, Jesus. I don't know, it's like 200 liters of water, I think. Something like that. I could be mistaking. My math sucks in converting gallons to liters. Uh, standard, your gray and black tank flush. And what's really cool about this trailer is underneath, I don't know if we'll be able to see it, but this is all an enclosed belly pan. So all of the tanks, all of the actual piping, it's all enclosed underneath and it's heated too. So when the furnace is running, it's pumping heat underneath so if you camp in colder weather uh it doesn't matter because you're going to be able to keep that warm and it won't freeze up now without skirting in minus 30 i think you're still going to have issues but you know minus 10 celsius yeah i think you'd be okay i think yeah, you'd be okay um this is a big storage container that's actually right underneath the bed and it's quite large i'd say it's about six feet deep mm -hmm. and a good i don't know three feet nah, two and a half three feet tall it's quite large, but our plans for this are we're actually going to insulate pretty much all of it. So it's a little bit more uh, just insulated for colder weather because it gets cold retardedly early up here. This is that little hose that uh, you can spray off the machine with. And you can see it's just a quick connect, which is pretty cool. And uh, that's it for the outside. So let's move on inside. Inside the trailer, you can see there's our party. Uh, patio right there. A quick connect that uh, Stacy was talking about. It just pops in like this and then to get it out you just push down and it comes out. So it's a very very quick uh, tear down kind of setup to get this all folded up for when you're trailering down the road. And these couches here are quite large. They like to say you can sit six people in total. I'd say you can actually fit four comfortably because of elbow room and that sort of thing and this here folds up and sits on these two little ledges and this turned into a secondary uh sleeping area and you've got your curtains for yeah, a little privacy actually, uh, there's privacy curtains here yeah. so you can if there's you know if you're camping with another couple they have some privacy now it is an rv so if they start fooling around you're still gonna hear it <laughs> <laughs> you still get some privacy at least there's no visual unless you're into that then leave the curtains open oh my gosh <laughs> uh so up here we have actually quite a bit of storage and I'm thinking for this kind of compartment, you know, waiter bags, helmets, mm -hmm. riding gear, rain gloves or rain, rain gloves, rain coats, that sort of thing. And? And uh, underneath these benches, I know you're thinking, where's the toy hauler part, but I'll get to that. Underneath these benches is actually uh, three large, large totes that come with this particular camper. And that's cool because it's bonus storage and you can actually organize it too. So these benches, how, how you would fit a machine in here is this table, you'd have to fold it up, put it in the bedroom, and these cushions you have to take off and put in the bedroom. And the platform that they rest on, this all folds up.
against each wall, and then you lower the ramp, and then you can drive your machine in. I and if you notice, there's several, I believe there's six, six or eight of these 1500 pound uh, tie downs on the floor. So you, there's plenty of room to fasten your machine down. Uh, they put backing in the wall for a TV, so you can have a TV up here. Um, power for the TV, there's a cable and sat satellite connection. So you know, if you're in an RV park that provides cable, which I mean, let's be real, probably Arizona, Arizona probably yeah, would, Texas. The, like the southern US probably <laughs> would, but not up here. Um, this is your stereo control for inside speakers and outside. You have two inside and those two on the outside I was showing you. This is a really nice, like a fireplace slash space heater. Now it doesn't run off solar. It takes a lot of juice. So you got to be plugged in to use it. But we had it when we picked it up yesterday, we had it plugged in, turned it on and it actually did throw quite a bit of heat. Uh, for a little tiny electric uh, fireplace, which is, I mean, it's bonus heat if you're plugged in. Mm -hmm. The sink, pretty standard. Um, RVs, a lot of them have these, where it's the actual uh, additional countertop space that fills in above the sink. And when you look at the sink, I mean, the sink in my apartment isn't even that big. No, this is much it, nicer it, than it's, our it's, apartment. It's quite a large sink, <laughs> so there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of room there. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with the stove, this part here, it lifts up and then you have a three burner gas cooktop and it's kind of like a weird like we have some roasting stuff in there but it's like a microwave but i'm not sure like it says you can do a bunch of shit in it it's a convection microwave oven is what they yeah. call it so if i'm being honest i've never even used one before <laughs> couldn't tell you if it's so gonna work essentially or not. yeah you're supposed to be able to grill in it and <laughs> it's got a bunch of features on it but you know what we're just gonna find out apparently you can make cake uh you know or roast a chicken so i guess we will try and we will let you know <laughs> how that works yeah um again in terms of rvs there's I'd say there's a lot of storage in this one. Yep. For uh, just in terms of kitchen storage and general storage, I could, I'll show you each cupboard kind of individually. So these ones here, there's drawers actually up above, which is nice. It, again, nothing is organized yet. It's just, we just literally moved into this thing. Uh, yes, they moved in as in put gear in, not living in. <laughs> not yet. Uh, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> and there's, um, there's some storage down there. Again, it's just nice to have that. And all of these cabinets have a little catch in them, so they aren't going to start bouncing open when you're flying down the road. Uh, under the sink storage isn't the best. All the bottom half storage. Yeah, because, you know, your hot water tank, your inverter, your... Uh, electrical. Electrical stuff, it's all underneath here. So, you, again, you're not going to get too much storage, but... Half cupboards. It's, it's their half cupboards, yeah. yeah. And up top here is where we actually do have quite a bit of storage, and the cabinets are actually quite deep. Yeah. Um, this is every cup we're going to use in there. Yeah, paper plates. We're keeping it classic. Here on Commander <laughs> Hashtag Outdoors. can't afford anything right yeah, now. <laughs> yeah. um, again, another spot right there. Corner cabinets, nice and deep. And this actually wraps all the way around into the corner. So you have tons of storage in there. This one here is a really remarkably large storage cabinet. I mean, you could fit me in it. You could fit, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't say that, but you could fit. I bet you I could. You could you actually, you know what? Stacy might be able to jam herself in there. If we have Maybe, enough drinks this weekend, I'll we take have, a picture. Oh my God. <laughs> um, but you could easily fit your kitchen appliances that you don't use, like a slow cooker, toaster, blender, that sort of shit. Yeah, that's easily, actually a good idea. You could easily fit those up there. Mm -hmm. Alcohol bottles you could fit up there because it's nice and tall. Cereal. Um, cereal boxes, anything large that normally would go in a pantry, you can fit in here. Yeah. And the fridge itself. So th this is a, a quite a large fridge for an RV. And it runs off 12 volt, so it runs off the battery. So as long as we have sun and we're keeping charging the battery, our fridge is gonna have power. And when you look at the inside of it, I mean, I've lived in apartments that don't have fridges this big. Same. And it's, you know, there's, there's a lot going on here. Same with the freezer. Like this is a good size, actual proper freezer. <laughs> Dual temp temperature control as well. Oh, that's the other thing too. Yeah. yeah, so you could kind of monitor your battery usage. So if you have stuff in the fridge, you don't have to keep the fridge as cold. Um, you know, if you have beer, let's say, throw it in the little fridge outside, keep that colder, and then you have stuff you just need to keep cold enough so it doesn't spoil. You can put it in the big one so you don't use as much power. It does have an air conditioner. You need to be plugged in to use air conditioning. 
Same with that. Same with the, I think I talked about the yeah. stove. It needs to be plugged in as well. Again, it, it's an RV. Uh, it sucks that it can't run off the battery. Cause I mean, we have, our apartment doesn't have air conditioning. So I was like, you know, maybe we can get air conditioning in it, but no, nah, it's just not gonna work. And it has a cool feature too. These little slots here, you open them up and then it'll just blast right out these. But if you shut them, the air AC will run through the ductwork. So we have two um, vents up in this ceiling. We have one in the bathroom and we have one in the bedroom. So if you want to come down here. Okay, so coming over here, um, I was going to talk about the bathroom, but I'll show you this first. This is kind of like your control panel. So if you push this button here, this is bat, right? So this will tell you how full your battery is with these four lights. Fresh is fresh water, full, black tank, empty, gray tank empty this is the water pump your water pump is not on all the time otherwise it'll kill your battery so if you're going to do dishes or have a shower you have to flick the water pump on likewise with the if water you're heater. boondocking if you're boondocking yeah now if you're camping if you're camping in an rv park well you don't even need water pump because you're just going to hook up to city pressure right and water heater you don't well you have to turn it on anyways but you don't need to worry about battery consumption mm -hmm. Uh, lights, this is just outdoor lights and there's one light there that kicks on from this. So you have like a main light just to when you come in and out. Uh, that's the awning control and here's the thermostat. For an RV, it's actually quite a spacious bathroom. I mean, again, I'm 6'2 and there's more than enough headroom in here. Now, the only thing is when I get in the shower, the shower head's not tall enough. So luckily for us, it's got a hose on it so I can sit there and, you know, Wash yourself off with the hose. We got an aftermarket one. Yeah, we got an aftermarket one We're that gonna... helps boost pressure, apparently. Yeah. But again, in terms of storage, you know, look at this. You got pretty good storage going on here. Standard faucet. It's a little sink, but again, it's an RV, not a house. Adequate storage under here for other stuff. We got lots of RV toilet paper. <laughs> and again, it's just a standard RV toilet. You know, nothing nothing fancy going on here, but it's a... It's a, it's a, a Sit on it. Show us how, he, how it feels yeah, okay. for a tall man. So this is how... <laughs> you don't need to take down your pants. How <laughs> <laughs> this is how Fitman is, again, for a six foot two individual. And it's not, uh, it's not uncomfortable. Just have I wash. been in bigger bathrooms in my life? Yep. Have I been in smaller bathrooms? Actually, yeah, I have. <laughs> and this is quite comfortable. Will you get in the shower? Yeah. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get in the shower for sure. So, again, they I think they put the skylight in for a reason for taller individuals. But you can <laughs> see, as of right now, I'm getting hit in the face. <laughs> it could work if you just do this. So it's not the end of the world, but it's an RV. What do you expect? Yeah. You know, if you expect, if you, if you need, uh, a lots of space, well, then you're going to be spending 160,000 on a big, huge three axle fifth wheel. Yeah. And this is the shower curtain and it's spring loaded. So it just, when you're done, it just retracts automatically, which is cool. So you don't need, you don't need to worry about buying a shower curtain. Then here in the bedroom, which I'm going to shut this door real okay. quick. And or half shut it. <laughs> so in here we've got all these lights there's three lights and they all turn on like this can't remember if i talked about that uh no yeah three little cubby holes for storage and they actually go quite deep they go right to the nose of the trailer so they do go quite uh deep in there same with this thing you didn't it doesn't look big but you can shove a lot of stuff into these if you know how to pack like stacy does she's very good at packing uh you can easily shove i'd say Oh, I don't know, a month's worth of clothes. Anyways. I bet we could fit our wardrobe in this yeah, camper. Yeah, we probably could because the other Yours cool isn't big, it's is mine. This closet here. Three huge shelves and there's a rod up there to hang stuff. And then your fuse panels down there. Uh, yeah, and then the fuse panels down there. And then you want to pull up the bed, show them the extra spot. Oh, uh, we just show... Oh, yeah, I guess there's that There's one. extra storage under there too. Yeah. yeah. So under here, that's that compartment underneath I was showing you. And this is why I was talking about insulating it because you have a piece of half inch plywood instead of insulation. So we insulate it, it's fine. Then you have these extra little totes here. Yeah. Right? So you can shove a whole bunch of good stuff in there as well. Yeah. Which is bonus. Handy. Right? Yeah, anywhere we can find storage. Anywhere you can find storage. <laughs> I mean, they, uh, they're they pretty good at coming up with places to put uh, storage in these. So that's the uh, solar control panel. And from there, you can just see how much power you're using, how much power you're getting into your batteries, uh, all that good stuff. I'll be the first one to tell you, I am no expert on solar energy 
or uh, electrical of any kind. I'm the exact opposite. I, I know about water. I can tell you a lot about water <laughs> and pipe, but when it comes to wires, not a clue. We'll have to figure that one out as we we'll go. We'll have to figure that one out as we go. But uh, all in all, we, we know we have a 190 watt panel on the roof. Yep. And I think it says a couple more things. 12 volt, 30 amp controller. And that's about all we know. Yep. We'd like to add another battery and another solar panel. Yeah, we're, we're thinking about adding a, a lithium ion proper, like a good good R, RV battery, like a deep cell one. They can actually run past 50% depletion. And we'd like to add another panel because the kind of the plan here with this thing is we're going to be boondocking and, and dry camping most of the time. I, I didn't get this so I could park it in an RV park. That's not the idea here. The idea is we have a mobile home essentially where we can load the side by side and disappear for a weekend or a week or whatever it may be it takes the stress off of it for one and it's nice to be able to just load up the side by side and you have all your gear in here and you can just go that's kind of another driving purpose and the kitty and the cat yeah we can bring our cat <laughs> um i know some of the longtime subscribers who are going to watch this are going to say well are you not going to tent it anymore no, I'm not a sellout. I'm not going to not tent it. I love tent camping and I love backcountry camping. I love that and that's not going to change. It's just this makes it a little more... We have more flexibility. We have more freedom. And we can just kind of be the masters of our own destiny a little bit more than we could before with this. Yeah. And it's okay. Was... Once a year, I'll kick him out of the camper and he can set up the tent next to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The funny thing is, guys, she's probably not kidding. <laughs> so all in all, um, this oh, is... Oh, this is something you didn't talk about. Oh, that's right. Okay. One last thing before uh, I go. Do you pull it or push it? Push it towards me. Push it towards you. There you go. So these are vents. So when you're driving down the road, you can see it's like a scoop and air just flies in here. And the reason they do that is you have a piece of equipment in here with an internal combustion engine and with that you get gas fumes you get exhaust and you don't really want your house smelling like exhaust right so you put you open up those vents when you're driving down the road there's one up here and there's one down there at the tail end that opens up just to get that cross flow going through and help vacuum some of that nasty air out uh so all in all guys i hope you really i, I mean if you have any questions about the trailer uh, feel free comment uh, on the video. Send me a DM on Instagram. Send me an email. Buckle up at commanderoutdoors.ca. Uh, if you have any input on storage solutions, because we are both really new to the RV world, feel free comment down below. We're open to suggestions. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're just here for a review of the trailer, it went on long, and I know it's a long video, but there's just a lot to talk about with these. And last thing is loud and dirty. If you like their stuff, I know I'm wearing it all the time now, pretty much. Uh, discount code Commander 20%, like the percent sign, and you get 20% off. Support a good Canadian business. Like, let's support Canadian business and not this bullshit overseas stuff. Okay. With all of that being said, I hope you enjoyed. Please stay tuned because I have a, a video that's going to mean a lot to me coming out really, really soon. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, rock hard, ride free. I'll see you on the next one.